First up is going to be uh, a bit on PDM uh, that I'm going to take you guys through before getting into what's actually changed, what's new in 2020. And I thought, just to begin, what we could do is, we've actually got that footage, uh, it's Craig here himself delivering a lot, his hair's grown a, a, a bit more since this footage was filmed, but just to let you guys see what's involved with delivering a vault. Right guys, I'll come clean, that's not actually us, that's a movie. <laughs> but yes, we thought we'd throw this in today um, on a slightly more serious note. Um, what PDM is, give you a bit of overview on it. Uh, for those of you who maybe aren't using it, haven't heard about it, or maybe just know a little bit about it. So PDM is a file management system which is optimised for the engineering environment. And the merits of having it are, are huge. If you're using uh, network save locations or anything like that right now, this will blow your socks off basically. So it practically eliminates any sort of network based corruption because we don't get packet loss with PDM for a start. Um, it provides automated revisioning, which in turn creates a complete audit trail. You can control user access and possibly one of the best bits about it is it maintains all your file references. So if you're saving a file and you change the name of that file or you move that file, PDM's already a step ahead of the game and it knows you've done that and it keeps everything intact. But again, a little bit of an example of that. You know, I spoke to a couple of you over the lunch break there that had maybe seen similar problems. And you know, often the question that comes up after this is, well, if we're looking at PDM standard here, you know, all, all this great stuff must come at a, a lot of cost in terms of the license. Well, no, because the structure is actually, you know, the way that it's set up is that if you've got professional or premium SOLIDWORKS, you actually already own the license. So you could be having all these benefits, but if you're not setting it up, if you're not trained on it, then you're not making use of them. So what I thought I'd do here, guys, let me jump into a, a quick example of using PDM, or rather, let me show you if we're not using PDM. So here's my labor of love. It's a saw model, a little circular <laughs> saw that I've been working on. Um, and it all works great. I'm really, really happy with this. And as you can see, you've got a little slot mate in there. So the guard moves, introduced in SOLIDWORKS 2017. Um, and it's basically, I'm happy with this. I've put quite a number of hours in. And I'm going to go ahead and save this. But if you're really sort of, you know, eagle eyes here, you'll see when it's opening, it's actually opening from multiple locations. So some of it is coming from a local drive. Some of it is coming from perhaps a Dropbox or a, a network location. And we're basically going to open this, we're going to cross our fingers, everything's okay, and ah, right away we start getting errors like this. Hopefully none of you have seen that error. There's chuckles, that's a bad sign. 
So maybe you have seen this error, if we're being realistic, you know, one of our colleagues has accessed a file, they've changed something, they've moved the file, they've renamed it, something silly, and ultimately, it's, uh, it's all gone a bit wrong. So I'm missing files here, uh, crucial parts of the design are missing. You see my tree here is just, you know, gone to pop. Um, I can see I've got some yellow, some red. Uh, basically time to phone Craig on tech support if he's not busy delivering a vault. Um, so yeah, it's all gone a bit wrong. Now, what I'd like to show you guys now is, let's repeat that scenario, but we're using PDM now. And this is a real scenario, you know. So uh, where I'll start is in the PDM vault, and I'll show you how the interface differs. So right away here, in the vault view, you'll see some things are a little bit different, even though it's based on the, the Windows Explorer interface. Right away, one of the big changes is that we get an integrated preview of all our files, which seems trivial, but that's a huge benefit. See, not to need to open a file. We also get a data card that stores all the important information. We can see that at a glance, and we can search on it. We've got all our version and revision history in here, so we can always go back if we accidentally overwrite something. It happens. We've got bill of materials, and then, importantly, we've also got the contains and where used tabs, which, in essence, keep tabs on all uh, the file references that we've got in this assembly. So I'll go ahead and open it up here, and as we'd expect, it's done its job. It's kept all these references together, even if a uh, Silly colleague has gone ahead and moved the file and renamed it or something along those lines. Now that we've done that, we can pass this through our engineering change process or you know workflow as we would call it. And in this, we can have inbuilt notifications. We can have it automatically increment the revision amongst a whole host of other good stuff that um, I won't get into too much. But certainly, if you want to know more, let me know. So really, guys, it offers a, a whole host of benefit. It's the most secure way we have. It's the most bulletproof way we have of working currently. Um, and you probably already own it. So yeah, it's a kind of no-brainer from that point of view. If you are interested in getting this set up, getting trained on it, getting using it, then grab hold of me at the end. Happy to have a chat with you and uh, see if we can cater it towards your individual needs. All right, guys, and again, that wasn't strictly a what's new, it was more an overview. Um, so we'll get over to Craig, it's gonna be here, and he's gonna take us through what's changed for 2020 in SOLIDWORKS PDM. All right, thanks again. Hopefully you enjoyed this wee video at the start there. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna talk you through then some of the enhancements and changes inside PDM for 2020. Some of those enhancements, we've got some preview example videos of, some of the other things worth mentioning is, for example, the simple logging out of PDM. Some of you have probably logged into PDM, went through Windows Explorer, then wondered how do you actually log out of PDM? And sometimes it's been hidden away a little bit down at the bottom right windows, expand out the little task icons, finding the PDM, PDM icon, right clicking it, and then checking out from your vault from there. But now you'll see in the previews at the very top right of Windows Explorer, we have a kind of person silhouette icon, and you can click that <coughs> to log out of PDM. So we'll get started with some of the enhancements, and one of them is to the performance when browsing through Windows Explorer, accessing all of your files. So let's try and see that improvement in performance in action. So from generic file browsing to looking up references and accessing files, the improved performance of SOLIDWORKS PDM 2020 makes your day-to-day -day experience that more efficient. When you're accessing files and folders, data is now loaded asynchronously. This means that you don't have to wait for the file contents to load before you can start browsing into subfolders. A lot of people have probably seen that with a huge list of files. Previously you had to wait for every single one of them to load, load before you could maybe go into the subsequent project folders. The same performance is there for things such as the contains where used bill of materials tabs, where again we don't have to wait for everything to load before we can move on to the other tabs. The similar improvements are also seen in the PDM task add-in inside of SOLIDWORKS. Again, where we can start making changes, browsing through things, without having to wait for every single bit of information to load as soon as we make a single click. So that's especially powerful when you have a high latency connection to your PDM vault, particularly if you're working off-site and you're connecting to your vault via a, a VPN or something similar, trying to connect there, that's where you'll see the most improved performance 
because that's when load and everything can be slowest. So increased performance <laughs> in 2020 makes that day-to-day -day life faster, saving you time rather than waiting for everything to load before moving on. A couple of enhancements to the user interface of PDM as well. What we have is when we are searching for files inside PDM, it's been made simple by the new quick search functionality at the top right hand corner. It's easy to access by just clicking at the top right corner or hitting Control F on our keyboard and then we can just start typing away. Predictive search is also enabled based on your search history. So you can just type in the first couple of letters of a key project or file that you might need, hit the down arrow keys and then hit enter to access them. And with that improved performance, things will start to load that much quicker as well. You also have the ability to control what it's searching. So you can choose what information you're actually searching in, where you want to search, and if you're searching for particular versions, you can do that as well. When it comes to searching inside Solis, if you're wanting a more complete search, maybe using the complete search data card, you can start to use operators like your AND, OR, NOT, greater than, less than, XOR, all of that, inside a single field. Rather than previously you'd have to type in information into multiple different tabs to build up your complete search, you can now do all of that in one. And once you've got your results, you can start to rearrange those columns just by dragging the top of the column. Previously you had to open up the PDF administration tool, create a new column set and customise it that way. But now you can just start dragging it around freely as you want. So searching PDM 2020 enables you to find the correct data faster with a more simple experience. The workflow for PDM also has an added in condition which you can implement into particular transitions. So what I've got here is I'm going to have a part and I'm going to have a drawing. And what's maybe happened is I've completed the part because I'm in charge of the part, but maybe my colleague Grant's in charge of creating all the drawing and the technical documentation. So maybe I've put my part through the workflow, it got approved, but then I have to make a, a slight change to the part or the assembly. So it's went into an under change or under editing state. I've left it there. I've now finished my modifications. Grant's finished the original drawing and Grant thinks he's got everything right, tries to put it through the workflow. But if we use this new condition, it can block that drawing from being approved because the part or the assembly it's based on hasn't been approved. You can't approve a drawing if the particular part or assembly has been approved. As soon as I move the part to the approved process, it will then allow Grant to pass that drone through and everything can be approved. I'll show an example of that in action and when it can be useful. So SOLIDWORKS PDM 2020 introduces that new workflow condition, which I mentioned. So when, for example, you might want a part and its drawn to travel through the life cycle at the same time, or at very least ensure that the part is released before or during the approval of the drawn. So we can use that new child reference state condition to enforce that particular behaviour. In this case, the part referenced by the drawn is in the under change state. Once we've approved that change for the part, the drawn may then be submitted for approval. So we can see when we initially tried to move the drawn through, we got a little warning in the tree that would prevent us from doing that. As soon as we put the part through, we can now move the drawn through without any warnings appearing in the tree so we can get that approved. Another example is during the re release of the top level assembly, the new workflow, sh workflow condition can be used to check if any of the parts or sub-assemblies are obsolete. So when I try to approve this top level assembly, what I actually find is we've got a little warning referencing that new condition, and it turns out one of the parts in my tree is actually in an obsolete state. So I've spotted a little mistake in my model, I'm using the wrong part that I shouldn't, so I can then go into SOLIDWORKS and I can kind of replace that component with the appropriate component, making sure I'm putting through the correct information through my workflow. So that addition to the transition in PDM 2020 makes it so that you can uh, follow the correct approval process, ensure you've got the correct data released as and when you need. Could also be that you're maybe out and about needing access to your PDM information. So you might need to see things such as maybe the history or see when something's been approved, apply it, check something, move it through the workflow. And you can do that in PDM Professional with the Web2 client. So there's been a couple of enhancements for that. With the Web2 client, the need to access data online is increasing year on year by customers. 
The Web2 client in PDM 2020 delivers expanded capabilities to answer that growing need. From any device with an internet browser, you can now audit and review the history of files by accessing the new tab at the top of the page to view the file details. A new bill of materials tab has also been added, giving you access to the computed Wildman or native SOLIDWORKS bill of materials. When they then need to maybe download any of those files, we'll now have a number of additional options in there when downloading them. Things like including the drawings of that assembly or part and including any simulation results, things like that. If you've used Pack and Go inside SOLIDWORKS, you'll be fairly familiar with making sure you're actually including everything rather than having to do separate downloads. Then obviously we'll have that extracted file on our desktop or downloads wherever we download it to and we can start getting working locally on our machine where we maybe don't have a direct connection to our network. So that can be handy in there. So that's a couple of enhancements to PDM. If we need to take PDM to the next stage, that's where we might want to then <coughs> look at SOLIDWORKS Manage, which Grant's going to take us through some of the enhancements in that. Yeah, thanks Craig. So getting into to SOLIDWORKS Manage here, guys, which is, for those of you who aren't familiar with this product, the whole idea behind SOLIDWORKS Manage is to basically add on to the functionality of your PDM. Um, and ultimately look to expand it into your business. Um, we've got this theme of the, the sort of coherent, consistent ecosystem, and this kind of plays along with that, I guess, because it takes PDM and expands its capabilities. Now, we're not gonna get too hung up on this. I understand not, uh, no one's using it here, um, but there are a couple of real notable enhancements uh, for 2020 that I want to, to highlight for you guys. One of them being the new dashboard viewer that we've got, um, and the other one being the web client. We also have some Outlook integration, and I'll show you guys that quickly as well. But for now, let's get into these. So what we've in effect got here is a new dashboard that's intended to be shown on a kind of communal screen, if you can imagine. And in this dashboard, you know, we can see key information at a glance about who's got what file, um, how many engineering requests are being rejected, how many are being approved. Basically key information as to the sort of lifeline of the workflow and the data that we're storing and producing. Now from here, what we can do is also log in via the web portal now as well. Now using this web portal, you can use this on any device by the way. Um, and if we go in here, we can again, you know, start to see some of the same information. No installs required for this, you know, you just log in and go and we can see who's got what files and where. Now, the other nice thing about this as well, as I was saying, is it ties in with our existing PDM system. So as we'll see in a moment, when I get into the Outlook integration, you'll see everything's kind of working together. So Outlook speaks to Manage, Manage speaks to PDM. We've got this sort of, as I said, this coherent, consistent uh, data flow. And yeah, let's take a look at that. So how does it actually look if we're considering it from uh, an Outlook point of view? Well, let's jump in and take a look at that. So looking in here, you can see, again, it's along this, you know, the lines of we're sharing ideas and such, and what can we do in terms of storing this and tracking it? Well, as you can see, I can choose the button now to, to go ahead and save this into Manage. And what that's going to do is basically take the email that I've got open here and store it in Manage. As you can see, I've only got one here, but that would otherwise be full of all our emails. They're searchable. We can create folders that we can store them in and such as well to keep everything organized. And again, as I said, you know, this all ties in with PDM as well. So in a moment, what we'll do here, as you can see, we've obviously got this email saved and managed. But if we switch over and take a look at the, the PDM environment, what you'll see is that it basically appears as a handy little extra tab. So along with our preview, our data card, all our revision history, we've now got this manage tab as well. And you can see right in there, I'm going to be able to access my emails and any changes I make here are passed to Outlook. Any changes I make in Outlook are passed back here, almost like SOLIDWORKS would do with the drawn and part environment, if you can imagine. And that's really it, guys. Not gonna labor on manage too much. As I said, 
Um, I know no one's using it here, but nice to know um, if you do invest in the likes of uh, a PDM system, that is now scalable. You can push that into other areas of your business, procurement and accountancy and such as well. All right, guys, and next up, we are going to get into something totally different, um, something that I really, really like. I've used a fair bit uh, and I think is brilliant. I'm not going to have the pleasure of taking you through it. That's going to go to Craig. I got that wrong yesterday. It's Craig um, who's going to take us through some DriveWorks stuff. All right. Thanks, Sir Grant. So I'm going to take you through what DriveWorks actually is and show a little demonstration of how that all works. So DriveWorks is a certified SolidWorks Gold Partner product since it was introduced to SolidWorks as part of the Express programs. So if any have SolidWorks standards, professional or premium, so pretty much any version of SolidWorks, you'll have access to DriveWorks Express for free under the Evaluate tab, similar to SimExpress, FlowExpress and things of that nature. But there's also a couple of different flavours for DriveWorks Solo and Professional. But what exactly is DriveWorks if you're not familiar with it? So DriveWorks is useful for helping you create all the files needed if you have the same but different files. What I mean by same but different is what you'll probably already be familiar with is creating a part or creating a drone, sorry, creating a part or creating an assembly and then potentially creating a couple of different configurations. So you may have four or five variations of an assembly, which if you're selling that to a customer, perfect. But what if you want the customer to be able to specify a couple of different bits of information, maybe the length of something, the height, the width, different key information, you may end up with more than five potential configurations. You can end up with hundreds or even thousands. So that's where DriveWorks is there to try and automate that process to make those creation of the parts, assemblies, drawings, reports, quotes, and all of that easier minimising the time that you need to do it. So I'll show a little, solo dem a little demonstration of DriveWorks Solo and I'll talk you through it as the video is playing. So what I've got here is a cupboard that's already been designed but inside SolidWorks on the right task pane I can just start typing in some of the key information. So I can maybe be on the phone right now to a customer and they'll say to me, oh I need a cupboard that is 950 millimetres in height, this width, this depth, I want maybe the front doors to have some glass on there and you can be talking them through that on the phone and then they'll get to the point normal where they'll say to you, how much is this roughly going to cost and most of the time you'll probably went, oh can I get an email or a phone number and I'll give you a call back with a price but using DriveWorks we can get a price straight away because it will update everything and then it will automatically create all of the drawings of all the parts and assemblies automatically based on my first initial one creation. It can then also create other files, so it can create any documents that we might need, which could include any emails that need, might need to be generated, any quotes, bill of materials, that sort of thing. And then I can stick it in a specific project folder for that particular customer that was on the phone to me. As soon as I hang up the phone, phone rings again, pick it up, you're straight back there creating another one. So it's once you've created this once and set it up once, it's something that you can just keep using over and over again. So it just tries to make that selection easier and it means that you don't have to manually go through creating those drawings for every single one that's the same. But the customer quite literally yesterday talked to us saying that they were doing this exact process manually for hundreds of drawings all the time. So it's something that can eliminate any of the repetitive tasks that you might have. Also the Express one is already there for you and you can even get a, a 30 day free trial of the solo application in there. What you can also do is you can also integrate that with PDM. So if you have DriveWorks Professional and you have PDM Professional as well, we can start to implement the two of them together. So this time I'm not actually inside SolidWorks. I've got my own wee kind of local web page that's created just for my company. So no one external can see this particular website. And again, maybe I'm on the phone or talking to a client or a customer. I can get key information from them, type that in, and we can still get wee previews as we're doing that. And then using the DriveWorks Autopilot down at the bottom left, it will automate all those tasks for me and it will create those drawings, create my quotes, all of that. But then it can automatically check them into my PDM vault. So everything's secure for me ready to start going on and proceeding with the design. The setup is fairly simple using the DriveWorks administration tool. You'll want to set all of this up. 
we'll set up exactly what is it we wanted to create. So we wanted to create all my drawings of parts, create my drawing of the assembly, stick it in these particular folders, tell it we're using, PDM Professional, put in my kind of vault name, username, password, tick a couple of boxes of what we want it to check in during this process, hit finish OK, then we just start designing, creating those parts. And it'll automatically check them into whichever folder, it'll create a new folder and create all the structure and put all my files in there. And then because I'm using PDM Professional, I get previews of all of that information. So I can see all of my quotes, Word documents, emails, notepads, all of that using the preview inside Windows Explorer. But otherwise we wouldn't be able to get. So that's how that works. And then we can do the exact same thing on phones or tablets. As long as we're connected to internet and we've set it up. We can do this anywhere we want, using that same design over and over again and it'll automatically generate those files for me. <coughs> last little demonstration is just showing the Driveworks Professional. Now, this last one is taking it to the final stage. So this is now a public facing website. You can actually go to the Driveworks website, there's some demo ones on there. You can have this open to your customers. So rather than you typing in those couple of dimensions, reading what the customer wants, why not just have the customer create that for you? So you set up everything. You can tell the customer what they're allowed to add, remove. In this case, the customer's looking for a new facility layout for the parts and products that they're creating. So they'll stick in the paths that they want, the rails and all of that to go, add in the machines that they require. And as they start to add them, they can get updated previews. I'll update the kind of rough cost up at the top right based on what we have specified. And once they have finished with the rough positioning, they can even use kind of some VR and AR capabilities. Stick on a headset, very simple as a Google Cardboard, just using your mobile phone. See a kind of rough preview of what that might look like, and they go, Yep, that looks alright. Then they can pretty much hit the finish button. If all of the information will get generated for yourself as the company, and then you're ready to go creating the product for the customer. So it just automates all of the design process. So the purpose of it is being able to respond to customers quicker, giving them the quotes, getting the end product out the door faster, while reducing any of the errors. So rather than you manually creating every single drawing and every single configuration, the whole process is set up once and carried out for you, saving you all the valuable time to work on other stuff. So jumping back, I'm going to go to then now some more enhancements inside and outside of SOLIDWORKS. So that'll be with myself again. So we're going to look at some enhancements for the API, the <coughs> fancy bit of programming, some changes to the Solid's RX tool, some system options, and some opening and working with files sometimes, and then finishing off with the SOLIDWORKS exams. So if any of you are fancy and want to get down into <coughs> a bit of coding for SOLIDWORKS, there's a couple of enhancements to the API for that. Obviously, Kieran mentioned earlier some enhancements to the 3D interconnect as well as the multi-body part explodes, so if you've created that exploded view in the part, reusing that in assemblies. There's APIs for those new features, along with other features that were introduced as well, as well as being able to now do things like sorting any cut lists if we're using kind of sheet metal and weldments, those sort of things. And there's been some redesigns for things such as how billets and chamfers are added into your model, and how you might maybe mirror particular components, changing the mass properties, that sort of thing. Using that API, last year we released an add-in, which some of you may have already downloaded onto your machine. And the purpose of that was to allow you to create any support tickets with us. We'd be asking for a bit of assistance inside SOLIDWORKS, and then responding to any of that. Particularly useful for anyone that has a single monitor means if you've got an error message warning popping up in SOLIDWORKS, you don't have to try and memorise that error, open your email or website, type in part of it, jump back to SOLIDWORKS to get the remainder of that error message. You're doing it inside SOLIDWORKS. And you also get access to the fast support that we use for remote onto your machines to try and give you a hand, and some kind of key kind of news articles that we might release. And that was also using that API that I mentioned. Next year, or start next year, we're going to look to release a kind of version 2.0 of that which is going to primarily be useful for anyone that has a PDM professional vault. What the main goal is, if you're looking to also search for what files you might have checked out, previously you had to open up Windows Explorer, 
log into your vault, go to the top right, do a, a complete search or open up a search, go to the checked out tab, pick your username, click search and it will show you what files you have checked out. But the goal of this is with a single click you'll be able to see a list of all the files that have been checked out. And you can see in the third image I've got a total of six files that I personally had checked out. And we can click the button next to it to see the folder of where that's located. And then we can also get access to some of the kind of key system information for a machine. And when we click kind of run on that, it will tell us any bits of the software that we may need to upgrade in relation to SOLIDWORKS. An example of that is if your machine is maybe a little bit older and doesn't have an updated graphics card, it will pop up a message saying, oh, you don't have a good enough graphics card to use the SOLIDWORKS denoiser and visualize, for example, or similar things like that if you're looking to upgrade. Some of you may have heard us when we're helping you in some remote sessions or on the phone and whatnot is asking for an RX file. That's where we try to find out what's actually gone wrong with the software to try and fix an issue. And this way it will maybe record the video of what's went wrong, so you can do it yourself, and it will gather some of the kind of key log information, that sort of thing. Previously you used to only be able to record the SOLIDWORKS screen, so if the issue was in Windows, Explorer, PDM, Electrical, there wouldn't be much luck recording a video. Last year in 2019 allowed you to record a monitor, or a second or third monitor, but now in 2020 you can now specifically record SOLIDWORKS Composer or SOLIDWORKS Electrical if you have any issues with them, and it will gather the appropriate log information for those applications as well, just allowing us to see what the issue is that you're actually doing, get that familiar workflow and try and resolve the issue for you. A number of the system options in SOLIDWORKS 2020 have changed. So there's a couple of additions in there for some of the new features. So the middle couple where we're talking about the different additions to adding in some new dimensions inside the drawings. So there's obviously some options in there specific to them. Then for example the top one where options that were related to pack and go have been moved from the system options into the pack and go menu just so it's a little bit easier to find. If you are ever looking to find a particular option. You may not have even noticed it in the PowerPoint is up at the top right corner of the search bar. A lot of people will scroll through those menus, just use the search bar at the top right. Even in SOLIDWORKS, if you're struggling for a feature, use that search bar, search bar at the top right. Use it all the time rather than struggling to find exactly where that feature might be. One of the things that's changed quite a bit in SOLIDWORKS 2020 is the opening and saving times of a, pre a file that was of a previous version. What I mean by that is normally if you had a SOLIDWORKS 2017 file, you upgraded 2018, or you had a 2018 file and you upgraded to 2019, the first time you open that file and the first time you save it was always dramatically slower because it was open up a previous version file. So if a file in 18 opened in a minute, it might take three minutes to open in 2019 until you've kind of upgraded it. The goal of 2020 was to try and eliminate that as much as possible. So I took a kind of random 240 part assembly and in 2019 took just shy of 15 seconds to open, 2020 still in the resolve state without updating, it was just shy of 12 seconds and then once we update them that will go even faster as well. Same thing we've seen for lightweight files at the top right, the bottom one I was opening files in the large assembly mode and it's just shy of 5000 parts, it's that OMAX model we've been looking at throughout the all of today. In 2019 it opened in 2 minutes 38 seconds. In 2020 that first open ran it being 2, 3, 4 minutes slower like it would in previous releases. We lose 16 seconds the first time we open it. But as soon as I've updated that file it's about 46 if I've done the maths correctly. Seconds quicker. So we lose 10, 16 seconds the first time but then are gaining back kind of 30, 40 seconds every other time that we open the file. Then if we use the new large design review that uh, Grant mentioned at the start of the day and, and accomplish with the graphics pipeline that was added in in 2020, the opening time is 14.8 seconds and with that we can still add in additional components, add in our mates, move things around and edit things. So why not open it up in that 15 seconds around the two and a half minutes that we did previously. And whenever we've been working with models in 2020 using that, the, the difference is very, well notice, very noticeable, if I'm being honest. Last thing I'll mention <coughs> personally is the SOLIDWORKS exams. It's something that probably a lot of you don't even know that you have access to the free exams. If you're someone that's on subscription, you get access to two free exams every six months for every single seat of SOLIDWORKS 
that you've got. In this year, they added in an extra exam, which is the semi-expert exam. So top level exams are the expert ones. You had the mechanical design in there previously, and now they've got the simulation expert in there. So that's the kind of top dog. If someone's got those kind of certifications for solids, they really know what they're doing. And it's well done to anyone that's got that if they're in here. What you can do is get in those free exams though. In the past was pretty challenging if I'm being honest. There was it was quite a rick roll to get the actual exam code. You have to go onto the SOLIDS website, it'll give you a code once you've logged in. You take that code, you send a text to SOLIDOX with that code and the exam you want. They'll send you back another code. Then you can maybe use that code in the tangent tester to set the exam and was a bit of a process. They've completely changed that. So now it'll just use your SOLIDS customer portal account. So if you've got your SOLIDS customer portal account, most likely you've probably already well if you've downloaded the software. It will know if you're on subscription and are entitled to a free exam, and then it will just use that free exam whenever you want. So there's no sending texts and getting additional codes, it's all just built into your login details. And then obviously with the introduction of things like the 3D Experience platform, there's even a couple of exams in there for that platform that you can set as well. Or if you want to dive into any of the other kind of the solve programs, your Simolia, Delmia, all of those sort of things, those exams for them as well. So that's it for myself. So I'm going to hand it back to Kieran, who's going to get us over the final hurdle. Thanks for that, Craig. So you're almost there. We're on the home straight now, guys. Just one last little section to go through. Now, the last little section that we did want to go through here was we've seen all the enhancements with Solarworks 2020, but what about installing it? What are the requirements for it? And what sort of software do we need for it? So starting off with these system requirements for SOLIDWORKS 2020, um, the major one to see is, it wasn't just with 2020, it actually started back in 2019. You'll notice that the minimum m amount of RAM that uh, is suggested for SOLIDWORKS has gone up to 16 gigabytes of RAM. The main reason being is it's actually other applications are starting to use more and more RAM as time goes on, which is why that they're actually suggesting that you have more RAM in your machine, <coughs> that way there's plenty of space for SOLIDWORKS in there as well. Um, there's a few little bits about operating software as well, but this is a slide where we do want to take a few moments out there just to, to remember some of the software that's no longer with us, unfortunately, for SOLIDWORKS 2020. Um, the main one being is, it's not actually quite left yet, we're not trying to kick it out the door or anything, but at the end of SOLIDWORKS 2020, so Service Pack 5, Windows 7 will no longer be supported with SOLIDWORKS. Now, you've probably noticed it already if you tried installing SOLIDWORKS 2019. There's a little message popping up just to let you know about that. So again, it's something to think about if you're trying to future-proof your, your current workstations. Another major one in there is on the server side of things. With Windows Server 2012 R2, that'll be supported up until the end of SOLIDWORKS 2019 SP5. So again, anyone that has a license manager or a PDM vault on a, on a server, again, something to think about if you're going to try to upgrade. The last little ones that I do <laughs> want to talk about is SOLIDWORKS Explorer. And you'll notice that it's only supported up until SOLIDWORKS 2019 SP5. Now, if anyone does use SOLIDWORKS Explorer at the moment, don't worry, the functionality isn't gone altogether. The only reason it's no longer supported uh, after 2019 is the fact that all of this functionality is actually readily available in Windows File Explorer now. So instead, we can just use that familiar window that you used to for every program. And the last one that I do want to mention is the Office 2013. As you can see at the bottom, again, it'll be supported until the end of SOLIDWORKS 2020. So again, if you're trying to future-proof your machines, it's something to keep in mind. Also with SOLIDWORKS 2020, you might be happy to know that the download and extraction process is now that bit quicker than any previous version. The main reason for it is it now uses parallel threading in order to do this. And the people who will notice the biggest difference with this are the people who are actually downloading multiple products. Now, a great little reminder that we do have here is if you're ever going to go ahead and upgrade or install SOLIDWORKS, we we'll always recommend that you have the install files local to your machine. The main reason being, if you go ahead and try and do that across the network, there's an easy chance that something might go along wrong the way if your network drops even slightly, there's a little bit of missing information. 
And the last bit of the bottom of this slide that I do want to mention is that the media kits for Swordworks 2020 will not be sent out unless specifically required. Now, you might ask why with this one. The main reason being is the fact that, believe it or not, a lot of people don't actually upgrade to Solidworks, upgrade the Solidworks when it's SP0. So by the time you do come to upgrade, these media kits, they're already out of date and you end up downloading it anyways. Now, if you do ever need this, you can specially request it, but of course the download option is always there as usual. Moving on to the next little section, looking at admin images, and this one is still a little enhancement with SOLIDWORKS 2020. And if any of you guys use admin images for your installations at the moment, what you can do is you can now go ahead and run a mock installation in there. So up until now, you'd go, go ahead and set up your admin image, you'd go ahead and deploy that out, and fingers crossed, everything's gonna work. But with SOLIDWORKS 2020, you can now go ahead and run a mock run on a specific machine if you wish. So you can then check that everything installs correctly. All the update statuses in your admin image are updating as you would expect along with the log files. And finally, you can even check that any programs that are supposed to run before or after the installation are also ran correctly as well. So you can have full confidence before you even go ahead and deploy that admin image. The last little section that I do want to go through is something called online licensing. Now, some of you guys may be familiar with it already because it wasn't actually new to SOLIDWORKS 2020. It actually came around in SOLIDWORKS 2018. However, some people are still not awfully familiar with it. So, most of you are probably familiar with machine licensing or machine activations or standalone licenses. And we've also got our network licenses. However, when we're using these standalone licenses, what we actually get is an additional option to use online licensing for this. So it's no longer active on one machine. What you can go ahead and do is set this up to activate on the internet. That way, if you're working between multiple workstations, you can simply log in using your SOLIDWORKS ID, and they'll go ahead and take your serial number across with you. Now, the other great thing about this one is you don't have to stay connected to the internet at all times. You can actually go ahead and take this license offline for up to 30 days. So if you really are keen, you're going on a long flight and you, you're really dying to get stuck into your SOLIDWORKS, you can even take your SOLIDWORKS with you. Now, caught me out again. I did forget about this slide yesterday and I forgot about it again today, but we've still got it here. We've got one more little product that we do want to talk about and that's SOLIDWORKS Cell. Now, not to get too much confused with um, forgotten the name of it. Driveworks. Driveworks, that's the one. Uh, not to get too confused with Driveworks, but just so you can see the difference between the two, instead of me rambling on for any longer, I've got a nice little video to explain. Manufacturers this. like Omax are constantly seeking new ways to engage their customers and easily share the countless options and customizations available in their product line. SOLIDWORKS Cell builds interactive product configurators quickly, so internal teams, stakeholders, and customers can select their own options, configurations, colors, and customizations all online, anywhere, anytime, and on any device. For example, on this OMAX WaterJet page, you can fine-tune door colors, safety setups, nozzle types, and base supports out of thousands of possibilities. Even better, the favorite combination can be reviewed in the actual space with augmented reality to check size, style, and surrounding context. Going further with SOLIDWORKS Cell, the online traffic analytics feedback can help your business optimize both design and production. Now you can connect your products with your customers in a new, interactive way using SOLIDWORKS Cell. So again, not to get too confused with, um, I've forgotten the name of it again. Drivebox. Drivebox, that's the one. I will remember it one of these days. But yeah, it's another bit of functionality that you could go ahead and add in there. Again, it's providing a little bit more functionality on your customer side of things where they can start to drive their designs, albeit it's still your designs at the end of the day. Now, just to finish off with, got a little roundup slide and just to go through what we've been through throughout the day, we started off looking at the improved performance, which Grant took us through at the very start of the day. We then followed it up with our streamlined workflow, 
<coughs> and then wrap that up finally with our connected ecosystem. So we started to look at all the additional SOLIDWORKS problems, eh, not problems, products. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hope they're not problems. But looking at all those other SOLIDWORKS products and how they all inter interconnect with each other eh, and work together. Now, just to finish off, I'm going to ask one of my colleagues to come up and say a few words. Peter, if you want to say a few words. Just a quick, um, you should have all had this. We're not going to go on a big sales thing here, but it's just to let you know there are deals that are running to the end of this year. You should have had emails for them. They're really, really simple. It's buy one, get 18% off, buy two, get 30, buy three, get 30 free. Um, if you haven't got them, talk to one of us. We're, this is as complicated as it gets. It's just to make sure, obviously, you're seeing things here. If there's things you're planning before the end of the year or the end of next year, have a word with one of us. It's probably better to do it this year or that. I'm going to hand it over to Alec now. I'm not really doing any longer than this to say this is a, a watch new rather than a sales. But it's just to make sure everybody's aware of this um, for the end of the year. Okay. Um, the guys, Grant, Craig and Kieran, have, have put a lot of effort and time and effort into the presentations today. So if I could maybe just ask you to give them a wee round of applause for all the work they've done.